The idea that we have direct access to reality through our senses is an illusion. We continuously create an internal model of the world in our head that we compare against sensory information that we receive from the world. This is why our voice sounds so different when we hear it on tape. That's why we can't see our blind spots in our retina. That's why things can happen directly in front of our eyes and we don't notice them because we're paying attention to something else that is more relevant at this moment to us behaviorally. We make these predictions about the future all the time. We're so good at it that we don't notice that we're doing it, but we're experts at it. One of the most famous examples of this is the viral photo of a dress that some people saw as black and blue and others as white and gold. And the reason you see this is the assumptions your brain makes about whether that photo was taken under yellowish illumination indoor lighting or blue illumination, outdoor lighting. Your brain, as you see the photo, immediately makes this assumption without you knowing it. The details in the photo that you're probably not even aware of give your brain the information it needs to make that assumption. The reason we make these predictions is that for one, we can anticipate what will happen next and two, it allows us to learn. So the area of the brain we study is cortex and in particular visual cortex. In visual cortex, we can control the sensory input to the brain by using a virtual reality environment. In this virtual reality environment, we have control over what a human or an animal, in our case, typically a mouse, sees and can investigate and ask what happens when the brain processes this sensory information and combines it with what we expect to see. Normally, as the mouse moves forward, the world moves back and as it runs along a corridor that we put the mouse in, in this virtual world, the walls of this corridor move back as it moves forward. And we can break the coupling between what the mouse does, running forward, and what it sees, the visual flow, and use this unexpected perturbation um, to investigate how the brain processes these moments of unpredicted feedback to update the internal model of the world it has. To measure the neural activity in the brain of a mouse as it explores this virtual environment, we use a microscope called a two-photon microscope. And the specialty of this microscope is that it can look into the tissue. And it can do this up to a depth of about one millimeter. So we can measure activity in the upper part of the brain of a mouse as it explores this environment. So there's different cell types in the brain and what we're interested in is trying to understand how these communicate and what roles the different cell types play and to do this we need to record the activity of individual neurons to then ask how they respond to these unexpected perturbations and how they contribute to the update of this internal model the mouse has about the world. In the future we hope to continue this research because we think it has the potential to make a difference in how we do medicine and how we treat psychiatric conditions.